Hello everyone, welcome. How are you doing? My name is Jessie and I'm a screenwriter and I make videos here about screenwriting and other related topics. Uh, check it out, subscribe, etc. All that good stuff. And let's get into it. Today, I am going to be giving you the scoop, the 411, the hot goss on one of my very favorite writers. Josh Thomas is an Australian writer, actor, and comedian, most well known for creating, writing, and starring in the TV shows Please Like Me and Everything's Gonna Be Okay. Today I would like to walk you through Josh's career and kind of just love bomb him because I think he's an amazing writer and I would like to convince you of this as well. And I'm gonna tell you the surprising story of how the fans of Everything's Gonna Be Okay inadvertently helped to get Josh a medical diagnosis. So stick around for that. Now, my fellow writers will know that the origin story of successful writers is very valuable because, you know, learning how people came up before you can be helpful to figuring out how you can follow in their footsteps. However, in this case, I really don't know how helpful Josh's story is going to be to all of us peasants. Um, it seems like he was just so talented that people immediately took notice of him and brought him up the pipeline. Uh, that's not to say that Josh didn't work for what he has or it didn't take time, but he didn't really seem to go through a lot of the roadblocks and bureaucracy that a lot of other writers, especially American writers, have to go through. Josh started off in comedy as a teenager. His first gig was the Melbourne International Comedy Festival's Raw Comedy Competition, where he became the youngest winner ever at just 17 years old. This placement allowed him to continue on to Edinburgh's So You Think You're Funny, where he made the finals. Yeah, trigger warning, this video is gonna make you feel incredibly inadequate, sorry. <laughs> Josh pursued his stand-up career touring his shows both in Australia and internationally, gaining recognition in the comedy scene. So it's all this effort into making it as comfortable as you can for you and your husband who clearly adores you, you know, sitting there feeling really bad. And then she got out her succotars and they were all broken. <laughs> The poor thing, I just sit there talking to her for 20 minutes while she ate her succotars like a pigeon, you know? Just... In 2009, Josh became a regular on an Australian game show, and this seems to be his first foray into television. He also had a podcast, before podcasts were cool, with his best friend Tom Ward uh, called Josh Thomas and Friend. It was around this time that Josh would start developing his first TV show, Please Like Me, with producer Todd Abbott, who was a fan of his comedy. The show was named after Josh's first stand-up special, and it was largely based around his life, so much so that when he came out as gay, he rewrote the pilot to reflect this in the fictional Josh. I just, I kind of feel like we've drifted, you know? This isn't good at all. Also, you're gay? What? No. No, no, no. After four years of production and a lot of back and forth with the Australian Broadcasting Company, Please Like Me was set to premiere in February of 2013 on ABC2, which to my understanding is like an Australian freeform, which is very fitting, you'll see why later. The show was met with incredible praise from fans and critics alike, and it's no secret why. It's a perfect balance of like sweet and wholesome with dark and dramatic, and I think that magic comes from the fact that it's basically just Josh's life told in his own voice. It even features Tom Ward playing his best friend and his dog in real life, John, playing himself. This all adds such a natural realism to the show, and like I said, it gives it that magic quality. Something that the show is most commonly praised for is its handling of mental health both within the world of the show and in the presentation on the show itself. Josh's mom struggles with bipolar disorder both in the show and in real life, and this struggle is a major plot point throughout the seasons. In one of the seasons, she checks into a mental hospital and we get to meet a whole new cast of characters, one of them played by Hannah Gatsby, who is a friend of Josh's in real life. Each of these characters becomes a series regular, and we get to see a decent glimpse into their life and their illness. I think what's really great about this presentation of mental illness is that it doesn't shy away from the really dark and difficult moments. Just listen to Hannah Gatsby's character admit that she stopped taking her meds. A uh, quick trigger warning for self-harm. The thing is, I just took myself off my medication. I'm fucked. 
started hitting myself again. What? Hitting yourself? Yeah, we've all got our things. You try and kill yourself, I tenderize. Hannah, oh, I'm so sorry. What can we do about that? That's fine. I'm taking my meds again. I'll be beige inside soon enough. It just really hurts to know that I need to take pills simply to function. Really painful. I can't wait to be beige again. These stories are definitely dark, but they don't drag down the entire narrative. The overall tone of the show is still pretty upbeat and fun. Uh, it doesn't, as Bojack would say, fetishize its own sadness. The show doesn't mince words when it comes to displaying the dark side of mental illness, but it also makes sure that you see these characters as whole people and not just their illness. They all have their fun and sweet moments, just like anyone else. Now, the moment that the show has been praised the most for is the big moment in season four. Uh, major spoilers ahead for season four of Please Like Me, and also a trigger warning, we're gonna be talking about suicide. So in season four, Josh's mom, Rose, commits suicide. This is something that has been royally fucked up in the past by media, so it's refreshing to know that Josh consulted with mental health organizations such as the National Alliance on Mental Health and the Black Dog Institute to ensure that this subject was handled appropriately. They were incredibly careful to not encourage anyone to copy Rose's behavior by not showing the moment it happened and refraining from talking about things like methods or reasons. The focus was just showing the devastation that her actions caused and then her cold, lifeless body in the morgue because that was the reality of the decision that she made. Josh said in an Entertainment Weekly interview, In Please Like Me, it offers some reasons someone might attempt suicide, but they're not malicious. A lot of people think it's kind of a mean thing to do or it's a selfish thing to do. As we did more and more research, we found a lot of people do it because they think they're doing a favor because they're in such a dark place that they think removing themselves will really help people out. And Josh's story here feels like an attempt to rebuke that. The aftermath of Rose's death is gut-wrenching to watch, not only because the writing and acting are incredibly compelling in the moment, but because the writing and acting have been incredibly compelling the entire time. We as an audience love Rose just as much as Josh does, and we're feeling all of those emotions with him and his friends. On a happier note, I would like to report that thankfully, the real Josh's real mom is still with us today. He just took her on a little excursion in the Australian outback, and they seemed to have a lovely time. Please Like Me was introduced to American audiences when the network Pivot acquired the rights. You know, the very popular and well-known TV network Pivot? So when Pivot shut down, Hulu acquired the rights, and this gave American audiences wide access to the show for the very first time. Because of this popularity, when Josh set out to pitch his next show in America, it pretty much got snapped up immediately by Freeform. And that show was Everything's Gonna Be Okay. Everything's gonna be okay, yeah? Yeah. Say it, Dad, say, say everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Tom? Yeah. Can you say that everything is gonna be okay? Everything is gonna be okay. All of us. Everything, Everything is going to be, be okay. okay. So the show goes into development and Josh shoots his very first pilot. The most notable casting announcement to come out was Kayla Cromer as Matilda. She's one of very few, if any, autistic characters to actually be played by an autistic actress. And about the casting, Josh had this to say. Having gone through the casting process of auditioning people who are neurotypical and people who have autism, there was only one choice. I went into it thinking it was more ethical and came out of it thinking, this is just better. Kayla gives the characters so much more authenticity. Just as the characters with mental illness in Please Like Me were not defined by their illness, the neurodivergent characters in Everything's Gonna Be Okay are, surprise, surprise, actual people. <laughs> also, just like his former show, Josh actually consulted with the neurodivergent people and their families to inform the characters of Everything's Gonna Be Okay. The premise of the show is that Josh's character, Nicholas, becomes the legal guardian of his two half-sisters, Matilda and Genevieve, after their father passes away. It doesn't exactly sound like a comedy, and Josh was aware of this. Apparently, in order to brighten the mood in the pitch, Josh finished it off by throwing confetti, um, and then he subsequently had to get down on the floor and clean it all up. <laughs> 
After the pilot, the show kind of develops a similar feeling to Please Like Me, where every episode is just kind of hanging out with the characters as if they were your friends. The humor is woven in very naturally, in much of the same way that we find humor in real life, and the premise absolutely does not sound funny, but I'm sure we can all think of a time that we have used humor to brighten up a sad moment, um, or, you know, used it to deflect from a tragedy that we were experiencing. What I love about Josh's writing is that he's so successful at capturing life. It's not trying to be funny or dramatic, it's just finding the natural dramatic and humorous beats that are in life. So the show was met with generally positive reviews, particularly from people who are autistic, and the neurodivergent community has really hailed this show as a beacon of good representation in a sea of disappointment. Now, since I am not neurodivergent, I would like to highlight a review from someone who is. Nira Birch says of the show, I'm not going to lie, this is a difficult show to watch, but for very good reasons. I see so much of myself in Matilda. I have not made it through an episode yet that hasn't brought me back to a difficult time in high school. I've cried so much watching this, but I have found myself laughing through the tears. It feels so good to finally be represented in the world of entertainment. I think this show will touch people, whether or not you are connected to autism. And if that's not the highest compliment, I don't know what is. So the first season comes out and a lot of people are discussing it, as you do with media, and a lot of people are bringing up the possibility of Nicholas being autistic, picking up on little things he says and does. How do you talk to grown-ups? I've forgotten. You'll be fine. Is he going to say standing over there with your decent social skills? Just ask them questions about their interests and display active listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that can be right. Now this is all well and good for fictional characters. I mean, people speculate about Archer being on the spectrum all the time. Uh, the thing is that Nicholas is kind of just another iteration of Josh from Please Like Me. Sure, Josh isn't the guardian of his two half-sisters in America, but Nicholas's personality is close enough to Josh that it raised some questions for him. This led Josh to take a bunch of online quizzes and, of course, consult an actual psychiatrist to confirm that he is, in fact, autistic. What a plot twist! Just like everything else, Josh incorporated this new diagnosis into season two, and Nicholas's diagnosis process looks a lot like what Josh described his to be. Uh, he takes a bunch of online quizzes with Matilda, consults an actual doctor, and even Matilda's reaction is quite similar to what Kayla's was in real life. Do you know the emotion that I'm talking about? That I appear fine, but it's fake, right? It's it's a performance. It's Yes. Exhausting. Yeah, yes. Yes, I know it. Well, okay. Okay, fine. You're likely autistic. Now, I'm sad to inform you that recently Josh announced that season two of Everything's Gonna Be Okay will be its last. There wasn't a lot of information given as to why, but my best guess would be ratings. As for the ending of the show, Josh said that he gave it as much of an ending as he would any show, and I'm pretty happy with how it wrapped up, honestly. I mean, I would have loved to see more of Nicholas navigating dating with autism and Matilda and Drea going off to school and Genevieve learning how to let people take care of her and that emotional development, but I'm happy with the note that it ended on. I'm really excited to see what Josh comes out with in the future. He has said that he's working on a project and I'm eagerly awaiting that and anything else that he does. You know, most writers pull from their own lives to inform their stories, but I feel like with Josh that practice is implemented tenfold. And you can tell by how genuine his shows feel. His efforts to increase representation don't actually feel like effort because he's pulling from his own experiences and he's creating characters that are fully realized. I think any emerging writer should check out his stuff and take some notes while they're at it. So I hope you all enjoyed this little profile on Mr. Josh Thomas. He really is one of my favorite writers. I mean, I have shows that I follow and love the writing of, but there's very few writers that I just follow everything they do and like watch them and watch their careers and he is definitely one of them. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you want to see more writer profiles, let me know, hit the like button and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!